Tickets for the in-person Sin Week events are available through the end of January. Don't miss out on your chance to join the Sin Crew and the Sin Club for delicious food, sinful movie watching, and more. The live event is in Nashville this March. Check the link in the video description for all the details. Welcome to Sin You know what I hate more than 50 seconds of logos? 50 seconds of pretentious silent logos. Is it an artistic choice? Is my sound bar malfunctioning? You don't know. Art of fake tail agents. Those were the years after the ice caps had melted because of the greenhouse gases. Narration. To create an artificial being has been the dream of man since the birth of science. Has it though? The birth of science was likely just the first time we made fire or decided to test out how shaping the club head could impact our hunting abilities. And I doubt Homo habilis was pondering at that moment how to build himself a robot mini-me. Ah! Since no one in the room reacts in shock or horror at this, I'm assuming they all already knew this was an android. So her being seated here as if she's one of the participants instead of up front as a visual aid is purely for us. Undress. You're 15 seconds away from saying, that's far enough. So couldn't you have just said, take off your jacket? Instead of putting the audience through the world's worst robot striptease? Also, why even give the command? There is no way her continuing to wear this jacket would have impeded your ability to press the release button on the roof of her mouth in any way. Speaking of which, is that the best place for the release button? If this android does all the things I think you're insinuating it does, there are some very inappropriate times that button might get released. And yes, I know we also patted her on the back, but let's just say this is also not outside the realm of release possibilities. I propose that we build a robot who can love. But we ship thousands of lover models every month. Confusing sex with love. Listen, baby Ken Leung, sex is where you fuck each other. Love is where you fuck each other and also have to apparently go to their office Christmas party. Even though for three years running, fucking Bob corners you to tell you about how Kachava changed his life. Even though you A, have no idea what that is. B, he hasn't changed in any visible way whatsoever. And C, there aren't enough Tic Tacs in the entire world to take care of the raccoon in your garbage stench that's coming from his mouth. See, they're different. Your own best customer, Shiachi Sama. Agent Colson needing to confirm that this guy fks more robots than anyone else in the room. Tell me, what is love? Oh, baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. But a mecca with a mind, with neuronal feedback. Why is everyone in this room acting like this idea is so revolutionary? I get that pulling it off will be revolutionary, but Professor Hobby is presenting this like no one has ever even considered the idea of artificial intelligence. And what's worse is that this room is acting like they're having trouble grasping the idea until he explains it to them. But in the beginning, didn't God create Adam to love him? Using the Genesis creation story as a basis for justifying scientific overreach. Programming your female robot to stereotypically reapply lip gloss in the middle of an important meeting. Nothing about this cryo facility suggests these fall hazards are in any way necessary. Baby was born as the first leaves of autumn fell. Not only does Monica start reading before the page is even turned, but this is also not the first sentence of the new chapter she should now be reading. It's almost like it was selected for its thematic relativity as opposed to its location in the book. After five years, your instincts tell you to mourn him too. I get that it's the Emperor's new clones, but the movie is still asking us to decipher the symbolism of a big naked man painting while the characters on screen discuss the possible death of a child. I'm only human. I can't think of all the things and feel all the things while feeling all the things and thinking all the things. Initiate. Query internal data. And somehow those three very general commands result in the computer pulling up the list of possible test case employees. Instead of having the foresight in a world where there are already speech responsive mechas wandering around, you could just use common speech to get the data pulled up. Just say, hey computer, pull up that list of employees I saved earlier. Or computer, show me the possible test case employees. Or okay machine, pull up those pictures I was looking at earlier. No, no, shit, not those pictures. Fuck. Unplug the machine, unplug the fucking machine. Honestly, I hate almost everything about how this world sees future technology. This UI is like, hey, when you want to touch something you want to see, I'm going to take a few seconds to show it float off the top of the screen and then slide down a slightly larger version from the top. The whole process will take about three extra seconds, but you weren't doing anything important anyway, right? And then what the f is up with the bottom right corner indent? Why the f do I want my bevels all of a sudden encroaching on my screen like the monitors are all designed in Whoville? I'm going to overlook the confusing nature of this performance evaluation, just because that is the type of thing companies do, but these news articles specific to the Swinton family, both being published on the exact same day and at the same time, are highly suspect. I love you. Don't kill me. Marriage. For my next trick, I present to you a man with no neck. This is where I momentarily thought this movie was going. I like your floor. Kill it! Burn it with fire! Only a serial killer robot starts by assessing your floor. Movie over. Humanity loses. I'm sorry. 
you. But he's not. No, he's not. This he's real, he's not real conversation goes on for all the Spielberg trying to be Kubrick amounts of some time. 100 miles of fiber, yeah. Metamucil's new ad campaign somehow makes it into the script. Symbolism. Because of this, after imprinting, no mecha child can be resold. Underestimating the tenacity of free market capitalism. How is David's reflection showing directly in this metal mobile while it's this high above his head? I can never go to sleep, but I can lie quietly and not make a peep. Movie doesn't end right now with the Swintons immediately returning David and leaving an Amazon review that says, cute kid, but way creepier than expected. Okay, fine. The shot is cool and perfectly fits the discomfort Monica is feeling. Take your scent off. I'm only human. Or am I? Just kidding. I totally am. Or am Not sure why they programmed this model with a knowledge of cinematic jump scares, but considering the kid does two of them within the span of 30 seconds, I think the programming team may deserve a raise for their incredible work. Robo Kids! Panic at the disco mode! Alright, that wasn't very good, but what do you expect? Alright, sins, not tragedies. Okay, I've seen enough. This techno tyke is a terrible stand-in for a child. How did this company find any success if it can't even get actual human mannerisms and interaction down? You think people would actually buy technology that was glitchy and half-baked and needed constant updates to even be somewhat usable and the exact second you need the damn thing to actually make a phone call, it picks then to do a forced update? Wait, what was I saying? Somehow this will be the turning point for Monica to embrace David. This psychotic laughter will convince her everything is A-OK -okay with her replace a kiddo. What's wrong with these people? Permanent, indelible, and unalterable? Is it also irreversible, indissoluble, and unerasable? Can you feel my hand on the back of your neck? Maybe, but the more important question is why are you putting it there? Because there is not a step listed there that indicates any kind of required physical initiation procedure. Sure, there's some sort of fine print that points to the back of the neck and the forehead, but if touch is required, put it in the f***ing steps! Also, why isn't Henry here? It even says names plural on the instructions, meaning you've just imprinted David without giving Henry the chance to imprint as well. Who will think of Henry? Walk us out, alright, sweetheart? And despite being a robot, he will not. And she will not care. And why did she even ask in the first place if everyone was just going to ignore it? I love you, Mommy. I hope you never die. Does this movie want us to eventually like David? Because having him say everything like he's pondering chopping up someone with a meat cleaver was an interesting choice. Strangely, this is the exact same procedure for turning me on. Look what I can do. Hello. But why? Why can you do that? Is this just a function that parents were clamoring for in the replace a child? I'm sorry, any future where anyone puts orangutan pictures on basketball backboards is not a future I can believe in. I'm out. Read to us? Sure, honey. Everyone to the reading boat. David's going to love it. Martin asks Monica to read Pinocchio to them because he's evil, we know. And David does like the story, so it's not an issue there. But how does Monica not see straight through this eating grin? The negligence of this parenting is less believable than a robot being frozen in ice for 2,000 years and waking to the golden age of Skynet. Pinocchio worked until midnight. And now we're cutting straight to bedtime? How f***ing long is this book? Is that because of the cup? Wait Baiting your robot brother by showing him that you can masticate and swallow your own food, otherwise known as masturbating. Speeding the code lockers. Smell that garlic. But if the android can't eat, why on earth would you have a path from the mouth to the chest cavity? This is just poor design all around. Don't touch the merchandise. Why is he still powered on for this? We can ask her. No, it has to be a secret mission. Kids are assholes, it's true. But this kid is assholing like it's his 9 to 5, and Frank the shift supervisor is yelling at him to meet his daily assholing quota or Greg in accounting will misplace his paycheck. <gasps> David! <gasps> Why did you do that? Not acknowledging the real issue, which is that no one taught him how to safely use scissors. Later on, he's going to quickly learn how to pilot an amphibicopter, so a little instruction could have gone a long way here. What the f*** is Teddy doing in here? What part of his programming was like, huh, better go observe this whole hair debacle. It might come in handy later in case an alien species digs us out of frozen underwater Coney Island, just as a random example. Why do you keep imagining that he was purposely trying to harm me? And because we don't know the answer to that. True, but you probably should, because you work for the company that made him. And even if you don't, you should probably know one or two people to ask about this. What's Mecca? It's a noodle bar. Oh, and it's a strange shorthand used to create a new form of discrimination in this dystopian future. But more importantly, a noodle bar. You know, like donut crazy, but with noodles. Then let's see what you can't pee with. Let's see who's laughing in a few decades when you're dealing with an enlarged prostate. Or so I've heard. Also, this is a hundred levels of f***ed up and doesn't bring anything to the story that won't be established when we get to the robo-sexploitation portion of the movie. So here are ten sins in honor of these dickheads and the writers they were wrote in by. 
damage avoidance system. DOS. Watch this. Thankfully for the script, David is aware enough to freak out when this kid tries to stick a cake knife through his skin. Not aware enough to avoid dragging another human into water. How would we have gotten these forced misunderstandings without it? Also, this freak out scene where David discovers pain is just one of many clues we get about a missing scene where Cybertronics runs absolutely no tests prior to sending David out into the world. The f is Teddy doing in here? Part of his programming was like, huh, better go observe this whole pool debacle. It might come in handy later when the audience needs to see me as his constant companion. Still having human drivers in whatever the f gear this is. You won't understand the reasons, but I, I have to leave you here. What about me? Will I understand the reasons? Walk me through how in your loving, compassionate mother's mind it makes more sense to leave him in the middle of the woods than just have him decommissioned. I mean, leave him in a giant basket in front of a church or monastery, sure, but the woods? Objects in the mirror may be exactly as melodramatic as they appear. I'm afraid. Of me. Yes. This very much made me think that Robot David had grown up into a shiny new Jude Law, and I also very much thought that should be impossible. But what else could be happening in this transition from David being left behind to this? I knew it was stupid, but I thought it anyway, and I feel pretty firm on blaming the movie for this momentary confusion. I think you're afraid of happiness. Nope, I gave up on that about a half hour ago. My biggest fear is being dropped into a completely different story with no context or warning. May I see what it looks like first? Movie has time for a whole scene about Jude Law's robo but not a single second for confirming any of our suspicions. Once you've had a lover robot, you'll never want a real man again. That's the best you could come up with? Doesn't even rhyme. You have to say something cool like, once you go bot, nothing else is quite hot. Nah, <clears throat> once you go droid, others will make you annoyed. Oh, I've got it. Once you go Terminator, you save all the sperm for later. I nailed it. Place a D&D &D on room 102, please. Scene does not contain a natural 20. How many seconds has it been the last time the two of you were together? 255,133. 255,133 seconds. How do you measure? Measure a... I am nearly certain the police car in this shot is the same as the one from Demolition Man. And the idea of these two movies existing in the same universe is my new favorite thing. Why is Gattaca so concerned about getting caught? It should be clear that he's a witness, not a criminal, right? Does he not have any kind of internal recording device? Even so, would he not be able to lead the police straight to the killer? The blue fairy made Pinocchio into a real boy. She can make me into a real boy. She also left him in the incompetent care of an old man and a cricket. We have a whole video about it, so it's worth at least one sin here. Secondhand stores. Moon on the rise! That sure was a well pronounced M for someone without any lips. Also, aside from being a source of light and theatricality, what is the purpose of this bright ass Bruce Almighty hot airball moon that advertises your approach? I've never hunted robots or anything for that matter, but the element of surprise seems like it might be helpful. Drawn lazily. Also, these mighty mechan Power Rangers have now taken this movie from ponderous morality tale to over-stylized dystopian farce real fast. Are we sure they didn't let Terry Gilliam in to direct for a few minutes? In the midst of this panic, I'm going to stop and slowly turn my head all the way this way and then turn my head all the way that way. I'm not completely sure why, but I overheard some effect guy named Brian say it would look mega dope. I'll break David. He won't. This your dog? Absolutely nothing has been established about this future that makes me believe this woman shouldn't know what a dog looks like. Even if they're extinct, it's not like they're dinosaurs. Locating this lost and found just far enough away to justify this one shot around the Coliseum. Did you kind of shoot me over the propeller thing? Putting a cameo in your movie featuring the zebra from the Madagascar movies. Also, Steven didn't think we would notice that the black robot died first. Amanda, go on back outside, honey. It's too smoky in here. He says in an open air space where we have seen exactly zero people smoking and no indication of any smoke in the air. For some reason, Ministry is okay with cannons being launched straight at them during their set. I just need to see. Oh, sorry. My x-ray machine isn't working. I'm gonna completely turn it the opposite direction while I hit it a few times while it's pointed at my daughter instead of what I'm trying to look at. I'm not completely sure why, but I overheard some effects guy named Brian say it would look mega super dope. Is just pouring acid over a mecha really that entertaining? Look, I'm not saying the human race isn't depraved. I'm just saying these are the most boring ways ever to destroy things. Show a little creativity. Sid from Toy Story put more thought into his destruction than he was just a kid. This is the latest iteration in a series of insults to human dignity. TikTok. I'm not sure which is more unlikely, that this entire hydraulic fluid thirsty crowd would turn on a dime this quickly, or that none of these idiots wouldn't have accidentally hit the acid target and ended the movie early. 
this is a beautiful scene, and I love watching them leave the fair, but I still think it's weird that Discount John Hamm didn't offer more help to David instead of just letting them skip off into the night. Making Teddy run behind you and try to keep up instead of showing some damn respect to the bear that literally saved your lives. We found him. And all five of us came to deliver the news because cinema. And how will we find just one? We will ask Dr. No. Movie does not contain a Sean Connery. I will change the color of your fairy for you. That's racist. You're not going to get us pregnant or have us to supper with mummy and daddy. Letting a stranger hold your hand while giving you the sales pitch. All this and much, much more <laughs> can be yours. Get in. I bet you forgot that AI was a prequel to the show Entourage, didn't you? And anything leading to that show is definitely a sin. I-69. Welcome to Dr. No. Putting a cameo in your movie featuring the rockhopper penguin from the Happy Feet movies. Combine fact with fairy tale. This works. Our blue fairy does exist in one place and in one place only. At the end of the world where the lions weep. These are the worst directions ever. The only reason this works is that Joe heard a rumor that Manhattan was the end of the world. Later on, we'll find out that Professor Hobby is the mastermind behind this shitty clue, and he'll act as if he knocked it out of the park. But in reality, hearing this was just as likely to send David to a zoo as it was to send him to New York. In the future, all police amphibicopters come equipped with a plot device setting. It's basically like a normal amphibicopter, except the doors are left open and a child can turn it on and fly it within seconds if the story needs it. Mecha restricted area. When technology is advanced enough to know when it's in a mecha restricted area, but not advanced enough to keep two mechas from stealing a police amphibicopter. Glass tables. Seriously, if you aren't willing to wipe them down every 30 seconds, just get wood. You'll never go wrong getting wood. Wait. Is this the place they make you real? This is the place they make you read. This dick has been sitting here with his back turned the entire time David has been calling out as if he knew he needed to make some dramatic reveal to the audience. She's mine. And I'm the only one. Movie takes all the worry we've had for David and all the empathy we've built up for him and turns it on its head in a moment that feels even more shocking as you realize that Henry was right earlier when he said, If he was created to love, then it's reasonable to assume he knows how to hate. This moment shatters the delusion for David as well as the audience and is the result of just some top-notch filmmaking, but also toxic mass droid I'm special! I'm unique! I'm David! Millennials, Gen Z, or whatever generation we are hating on this decade. Why do you only have David models here? We see some boxed up Darlene models in a bit, but why is that the limit of your creativity? Sure, I get the assembly line nature of it all, but how difficult is it to do some adaptations on the exterior to adjust for race, ethnicity, or tattoos? If you're building me a kid, I want him tatted up, damn it. Stealing a shot from the movie Jeepers Creepers. At last, a love of your own is a terrible tagline for a robot kit. I dare you to think of a worse one. You know what? I take it back, please don't. Deus ex tilapia. Also, that's not how fish work. Is David not made of metal? We have hippocopter? I will not stand for the selective magnetism. I am. I was. I mean, barely. Really, what role did your character serve? Companion to David? Not really. Teddy was that. You just kind of hung around. Comic relief? No. Needed for the plot? Themes? I'm honestly wondering what we even lose if we discard your parts, other than about 20 minutes from the bloated runtime. And the movie's cheating with reflections again, because there's no way her face is reflected this large from this distance. And David continued to pray to the blue fairy there before him. Ah, sudden end movie narration that isn't actually the end because there's somehow still 30 minutes left in this movie, even though this is the perfect end. Thus, 2,000 years passed by. The perfect encapsulation of what it feels like sitting through this movie somehow makes it into the script. Movie decides that the best way to visualize AI 2,000 years later is to make them look like every pop culture depiction of aliens everywhere, just in case the audience needed one last chance to be confused by something. Is this Raiders of the Lost David moment supposed to be a parallel to the cryogenic stuff with his brother from earlier? Because that's a cool idea, but the movie never really does anything to set up how that's meaningful to us in any way. Well, I guess that's why they say you should never meet your heroes. I wonder if this alien is as bored with watching David's life as I am. Thinking an android species this advanced would need to touch to transfer data to each other. I have a wish to make. And what is your wish? My wish is that this movie would have taken one of the five possible endings it's already blown past instead of having another 20 minutes left. This toy bear has a Chekhov's hair pocket. Give him what he wants. Holy sh**. 
That's the narrator. Why is he speaking English to these droids when they were all communicating via prayer circle earlier? And where the f*** are we right now? I assume David was in a simulation. But then we saw the not-alien bots looking down at the simulation through a high-def table. So what is this now? A simulation within another simulation? David, I often felt a sort of envy of human beings. And thus begins a full two minutes of philosophical technobabble BS just to say, hey, we can bring back your mom, but only for a day. Just get to the point! But the experiment was a failure. For those who were resurrected only lived through a single day of renewed life. Wait, is this not a simulation anymore? Was it ever a simulation? I have no idea what the f*** is going on here. I don't feel like the movie even cares. Oh yay, the boring psychotic child with no personality has finally found a way to get back to his traumatized mom who left him for dead in a forest. And we're happy, I guess? There was no Henry. There was no Martin. There was no grief. Martin was a dick, sure, but he was a kid. And what did Henry do that was so terrible? The idea that Martin and Henry are now ensconced in history as the ultimate villains of humanity just isn't fair. I hope there's a whole other subset of aliens that are standing outside with picket signs that read, Justice for Martin and Henry! I can hardly keep my eyes open. Don't know what's come over me. It's the movie, Monica. It has that effect on people. And for the first time in his life, he went to that place where dreams are born. And Teddy climbed up on the bed to do what he does best, sitting there and watching them sleep like a creepy pervy pet, until eventually he dies, rusted and decomposed, and wallowing in the meaninglessness of it all. The end. He is what? trash! Daddy. Trash! Trash! Not for you! Tell me, what is love? Loving you is work, Jerry. Hard work. I wonder if I did that right. I don't. Y'all got to watch you, Chach. Who am I? You are not my mother's. You are a snort. Mommy, will you die? I see dead people. Baby, please. I am not from Havana. Teddy, this is David. Hello, Teddy. First thing you gotta know about me, I'm a hugger. I am not a toy. You are a toy! What do we do? Take it! Hack the planet! Hack the planet! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages. Can you dig it? That is why they call the end of the world New York City. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. 